Okay. And what Itzhak Shapira does in this book is he takes Kabbalah and he says, look, it's just, it's just Yeshua. The same thing is taught in the gospels. But this is what really, really gets me. And this is, this is why I say that it's blasphemy. And this is, uh, initially I contacted Itzhak Shapira over an issue about something about this, not knowing that it was in his book that he taught it. And he said, go read my book. This should clarify some things. Um, so, um, let me find it real quick here. The prayer mentioned the name Sar Hapanim as the tithe. This is a quote from page 229 of Itzhak Shapira's book, Return of the Kosher Pig. The prayer mentioned the same, the, the name Sar Hapanim as the title that is given to Yeshua. In addition, the prayer mentions another minister or angel who is called Metatron. As we will shortly learn, Metatron and Sar Hapanim are the exact same entity as the Messiah himself. In essence, it is because of the Metatron who is called Yeshua, the Prince of the Presence, and Metatron, that our prayers will be received by God. In your show notes, okay, so uh, basically then he spends the next, I don't know how many uh, pages, explaining how Metatron and Yeshua are in fact the same. We can also bring the testimony of Rabbi Shimshon as the as he mentions an angel who is called Yehoshua, long form of Yeshua. The task of this angel is to protect the righteous ones who go down to hell to restore the souls of the wicked. Yeshua of Nazareth said the same about himself. And he quotes a passage of scripture. Um, this, my friends, okay, and then look at this. This is why you have all those in your show notes. This is why you have all these uh, these different uh, passages. Shapira uh, then takes, and I'm sure he's taking this from rabbinical sources, but then he takes Genesis 17.1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai, walk before me and be thou wholehearted. He says this is Metatron. Anywhere where El Shaddai is uh, mentioned, I think he equates to Metatron. He uh, says Genesis 18.1, El Shaddai is Metatron. In Genesis 22.11, Metatron. Genesis 32.31, Metatron. And again, in Exodus 23.20-21, Metatron. Here's the problem, is that you don't find any mention of Metatron in the Torah whatsoever. And let's talk about Metatron for a few seconds. Many of you might be wondering, who in the world is Metatron and why, why am I so upset about it? Um, so I wrote a paper for, uh, for Rob's class, one of Rob's classes, on this subject long before I knew people were actually equating Metatron with the Messiah. Okay? Um, I'm going to read just a couple of excerpts from this. Um... So basically we have in Genesis four through five, uh, Enoch is the seventh generation. And uh, now why am I talking about Enoch? This will all tie together. Moses tells us that, uh, uh, that all six generations before Enoch died. But when we get to Enoch, it says that he walked with God and was not for God took him. That's in Genesis five twenty four. Okay. So what happens? The very first mention that we have of Metatron is in three is in three Enoch, which is a uh, rabbinical source. It's Rabbi Ishmael. He says he went to heaven. He saw uh, the he he saw he talked with God. All these kind of things. So I'll read just a little excerpt from my actual paper that I wrote on this. We are told in three Enoch three that Enoch ascended to heaven and was named Metatron. So what you have already, okay, at the very first instance of Metatron, is you have Enoch, who we see in the Bible. Enoch is a man. He's born to a father and a mother. He's the seventh generation from Adam, right? He's a man. Now we're told in the apostolic scriptures that he didn't die. He was taken up. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but then three Enoch tells us that he actually became Metatron. So now he's not Enoch anymore. He's Metatron. Three Enoch is a book written in the fourth to fifth century by Rabbi Ishmael, who was supposedly. T uh, no, no, it's not. It's someone who's who claims. claims to be. So it's a pseudepigraphic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, heaven and confronted by Metatron, who is called Prince of the Divine Presence. 
and is said to be, quote, greater than all the angels, more beloved than all the ministers, and more honored than all the hosts, and elevated over all potentates in a sovereignty, greatness, and glory. That's 3 Enoch 4 1. As can already be seen in the biblical figure and had progressed from a mention in the Torah to a writer of a popular book in the first century, to an angel that had been given the name based on the Tetragrammaton, that is the four letter name of God, Yodhevavhe and said to be the prince of the divine presence by the 4th to 5th century. Already this figure seems to be taking on divine attributes, so I agree that Metatron takes on divine attributes, but as time went on, so did the development of this angelic figure. Quote, He, that is Metatron, is the garment of Shaddai, i.e. the visible manifestation of the deity. His name is numerically equivalent to that of the Lord. He governs the visible world, preserves the unity, har uh, the unity, harmony, and the revolutions of all the spheres, planets, and heavenly bodies, and is the captain of the myriads of the angelic hosts. What is this? What is this? In why why are they writing this? In my opinion, three Enoch, and the appearance of Metatron being given a name above all names, being the mediator between God and man. This is an answer to you, to the Christians. This is an answer to Yeshua. They got this guy that they say they have this personal relationship with. He's the mediator between God and man. He's actually somewhat divine. He's given this name that's above all names. What does this sound like? It sounds exactly like what the Christians have been preaching the whole time about Yeshua. This is an answer to Yeshua from the non-believing Jews. And not only that, but to say that Yeshua is Metatron is to say that Yeshua is a man. To say that he was born as Enoch that became a man. How is this not blasphemy? How is that not taking the name of our Messiah Yeshua, God on earth, and demoting it to something else? doesn't this tick anyone else off except for me i mean i read this in his book and i just thought this is absolute trash it really really upset me because because what he's doing is he's telling other believers who have no clue you know there are people sitting in there you know i I see the housewife who picks up Return of the Kosher Pig and says, oh, this is great. This man's from Israel. He speaks Hebrew as his native language. And she's reading along and she says, oh, I've never heard of Metatron before, right? And now what is she thinking? Oh, Jesus and Metatron are the same. She has no clue about the history. And you know what? Itzhak Shapira should know better. He's done the research. He's done the research.